Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and we're going to go through the UFC Fight Night card for this Saturday, Burns v. Brady, and we're going to look at it from a DFS perspective, and we're going to essentially go through and identify what the best plays are, basically the key fights to target, and uh, just give you kind of a DFS overview. Um, when we do the other videos, we're going to do a contrarian betting breakdown. And then we're also going to do a, a line of construction video where we uh, use the Sims, use the different tools available by a Saber Sim and other potentially other tools and try to, to create a portfolio of lineups or show you how to create a portfolio of lineups specifically to win that, you know, the big prize in the, in the, in that uh, MMA throwdown or lottery or whatever they're calling it now uh, to win the big hundred thousand. But for now, we're going to go through and just kind of identify where I think the best plays are going to come from and the best fights to, to, to key on. Um, it looks, as it usually does, it looks pretty straightforward um, this week. Uh, fortunately, we do have uh, quite a few fights. We do have, what do we have? Uh, we have now 13 fights now. It was almost 14. Uh, but then Span and St. Pru, uh, just, we just lost that one. But uh, we did get Cody Durden come in to fight Matt Schnell, which is good. So we do have a, a card where you could, you know, you can make good plays and, and be in contention for good prizes. Um, you're still going to have to try to get a little bit unique um, when it comes to winning the big, huge GPP. But even with that one, you know, 13 fights is is a decent is a decent number of, uh, of fights um, where you don't have to get too crazy. Um, so let's kind of go, the order I want to go through here is, is just, let's start with the key fights because that to me is, is going to be, you know, the key to this card. And I'm, I'm identifying like four of them as, as the fights you really are going to want to target probably both sides of. And if you can get those right, um, you're probably going to be on your way to scoring really well. And if you don't want to. Uh, try to get those right per se, you know, you could probably, if you're going to do a, a portfolio of lineups, play someone from each side of that fight. And if you're going to play 150 lineups, you could almost lock in uh, all the combinations of those four fights and still have good, you know, have, have a good amount of combinations left, um, you know, to, to build a good portfolio. Now you're going to have to be right with respect to those fights delivering, but um, yeah, it certainly looks like that's going to happen. Um, for, well, first of all, the main event, uh, Gilbert Burns versus Sean Brady, um, you know, five round fights are always to be considered key fights just because you have five rounds to work with. And both of these fighters do, do carry a, a decent amount of grappling upside. I mean, they're both black belts. They're both can, you know, they both can get it on when it comes to the grappling. So that type of style does promote, uh, you know, good DraftKings scoring, even in the absence of a finish. So even though these guys don't have the greatest inside the distance lines, like plus 220, 240 each, the combination of the five rounds plus the grappling points that are available to both of these fighters, you can get you get reversals, takedowns from both of them, really, some, some control time. And there's always finishes out there. So this is definitely a fight that you're going to want to, you're, you're going to want to, you know, target. Uh the next one, or well, what probably should have been the uh, the first one, is um, is Kyle Nelson versus Steve Garcia. Um, this is huge favorite to finish. Um, you look at the inside the distance lines, like minus five hundred or so. So huge, you know, huge upside, and it comes from both sides of this. You have uh, Garcia minus one fifty five inside the distance, and and Nelson himself is plus two fifteen. Um, at his price, uh, that is extremely strong. Uh, I mean, look at Kyle Nelson. I mean, it's seventy six hundred to have that inside the distance line. That's an extremely strong play. So, you're going to want to play this fight. You want to, you know, you're going to play probably both sides of this, and uh, you could be, I don't want to say sure, but you'll be pretty confident that the winner of this is going to put up a good score. Um, next one is going to be. Where is it? Uh, Trevor Peak versus Yeshul uh, uh, Ashmus. Um, it's interesting. The fight goes the distance is 
kind of a pick them, which is really surprising to me. I mean, I, I was expecting this to be extraordinarily juiced to the under here. Um, you have Trevor Peak fights, which usually are very, very action-packed. You look know, at the inside the distance line, too. It's like plus 265, plus 245. So in and of itself, this, that doesn't look like the greatest, but but there's going to be so much volume initiated by the Trevor Peak side. It's not like Ashmus is going to be backing off from this. So even this this fight doesn't finish, there's just so many ways that this fight can deliver. You can also get some takedowns. I mean, Trevor Peak has been involved in, in fights like that where he's gotten taken down, when he, where he's gotten takedown. So I think this fight is another one where you're going to want to just jam both sides. So the Garcia fight against Nelson, the Peak fight against Ashmus and, and the main event, and then the fourth one, which is probably fourth, but yeah, I mean, you could argue that uh, uh, this is right up there with even the peak fight is uh, the fight that was postponed from the week before or, or two weeks ago, uh, Nathan Fletcher versus uh, Ramaska. I mean, the metrics on this remain very strong, um, specifically on the Fletcher side. Fletcher not only has an inside the distance line to plus 115, but he also has a takedown upside. I mean, this is a, this is a big number. You know what I mean? This is, these are strong, strong metrics for someone who's 8,300. This is a really an elite play. And then the other side of this Ramask at 70 at 7,900. I mean, his, his inside the distance line is pretty strong as well. Um, at what is he? I mean, plus 205. So, this is another key fight. Like both of these are all four of these fights are extremely strong. Um, so if you wanted to play, you know, even single entry or whatever, if you pick one of those <laughs> from those four fights uh, and, and, and just get the right combination, you're going to be in really, really good shape. Um, so w when you have that to kind of work with and to fall back on, you're really uh you're you're starting off very very strongly, and and I think that's the way you should be starting off this card. Um, okay, uh, one sec. Let's get back up to this. Okay, so let's take a look at I guess some of the other fights and identify which are the better looking favorites than the others, which are the ones you might want to fade. And I I have a couple of ideas here, and I have a couple of ideas for underdogs that that are probably good plays here. I mean, like this Petrosky against uh, Butka. Again, his inside the distance line isn't great, but he, he's probably going to go, well, it's almost definitely going to go for a real wrestling heavy attack. So you, you get a bunch of takedowns, you get control time. He can pay off a price tag, but it's not as if he's cheap. You know, he's, he's 9,300. So to, for him to pay that off, I mean, he's got to get a, like a bunch of takedowns and a lot of control time. And, you know, in addition to that, he could, he probably needs some ground and pound also to, to, uh, to go along with that. So, I mean, he, he's, he's a, a favorite that you're going to have to shuffle through into the mix. And there's a whole bunch of them that kind of look like this. So it's really, again, going to come down to, you know, getting those four key fights, right. And then the favorites, you know, you're just going to shuffle in and out. Uh, Butka, no interest here as an underdog. Uh, Jacqueline Amarin, it, it, it's it's a kind of a, a light version of the Petrosky play, I think. I think Amarin, her path to victory is also probably going to be some degree of wrestling. Um, I mean, her inside the distance line is really poor at plus 200 for her price. So she's going to have to go to the wrestling to get that done. And it's possible, you know, it, it's, it's just a tough price to pay. And it's a tough price to pay off when all you're getting, I mean, you don't have a lot of finishing upside and you're just getting grappling with, without too much submission threat, without too much ground and pound threat. It's not like she's the type that's going to go for the finish anyway. And we'll just take a look at what she, she has here. I mean, uh, well, Maybe, maybe I misspoke. I mean, she does have good grief. What the hell do I know? Eight fights, eight wins, all subs. I mean, all finishes. All right, so F me. I mean, she's 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 a good favorite, I suppose. She won 
first round submission, Corey McKenna. I mean, for real. I mean, the the Montserrat one is uh, even the Ruiz one. It's pretty. It's pretty good because I don't know. Like whenever you can get a late finish, Ruiz is pretty terrible though. But I don't know. She she was a pretty bad read by me at first. I suppose. I mean, this she does have a lot of finish finishes, and she does go for the finish. So she's right alongside of. Uh, of Petrovsky as far as a good favorite. As a matter of fact, I would say she's probably better. Um, and Demopolis, I just, I just, you know, she's plus 250. You know, she, her inside the distance line is poor. I mean, she's not, she does always have kind of some submission equity, but it's just, it's just not enough. I mean, we'll look at her her odds here. Demopolis inside is plus 625. It's not going to be good enough. So, yeah, Amarim, alongside of Petrovsky, perfectly fine favorites. Here's another one I think is pretty good. The, the Gabriel Santos. I mean, he, we have, the only thing is we haven't seen him in a while. This is the thing that kind of bothers me about him. But I remember his fights were very, very action packed, very exciting. He had a, Came in to fought Lerone both Murphy on short notice. I think it was in France too. It was like a, it was a tough spot. He got five takedowns. I mean, that's pretty damn good. And then he he, he backed that up with, boy, a kind of a disappointing loss. He was killing Onamba before the kind of the tide turned in the second round. Um, I, I don't like that we haven't seen him in over a year, but. He's got to have a lot of upside at that price, just because of how active he is. So, de definitely like that. I mean, let's let's take a look at the inside the distance line here. Um, hold on, Santos inside plus one thirty five is pretty pretty reasonable. I mean, you you put that alongside of the takedown upside. I mean, this is a, this is a pretty strong play. Yi inside plus 625, no thank you. So how do you rank these so far? You know, think about this. I mean, Santos, Amarim, and Petrowski. I guess because of Santos's price, he's probably the best. Followed by Amarim, and then followed by Petrowski, I guess. Um, Lima dos Santos is probably going to be a pass on the Lima side. I mean, you look at his inside the distance at plus 275 at, at 8,500. That's really not that great. And he doesn't really have too much takedown upside. I kind of I kind of like the underdog here a little bit to Santos. I mean, he's doesn't have a great inside the distance line, but he's very he, he's very, very active. He doesn't, you know, he doesn't back down. He 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 tries to put up some volume, you know, and, and so even though if you look at his inside the distance line, it's not that great, you know, plus, what is that, plus 400. I think if he wins, it's going to be because he got a you know, good volume and just good activity. I, I just I just think that he's a better underdog than his metrics are kind of giving him credit for. So I, I think I do like him a little bit. But Lima, I, you know, just too many better favorites. Uh, Dolgarian against Marat. So Dolgarian is a huge favorite, and he's priced at ninety nine hundred. I think. Um, this is. I mean, obviously, I've never, I've never seen anybody priced ninety nine hundred before. And I mean, ninety nine hundred is it's a tough price. You know, look, his his inside the distance line is going to be good. I mean, I'm sure it's like minus like a thousand and you know whatever inside. We'll take a look. I mean, minus twelve hundred inside the distance and. In the first round, even he's what? Uh, it's like minus two hundred inside the first round. But I mean, the question is: is even if he wins in the first round, and even if he scores, what? Uh, let me just let me just see something. If Delgarian, so he did have seven takedowns in his last fight, so. He's not going to get seven takedowns in this fight because if he gets seven takedowns, then it's because the other guy was was good enough. You know what I mean? Like to get up from the others. Um, if 
probably the most likely outcome is that Bulgarian gets his takedown and grounds and pounds him. Let, let's just say that that happens and it happens in the first round. And let's say he gets 120 fantasy points, which is a, which is a ton. What does the rest of the lineup have to look like to get in a $9,900 fighter? Like, for example, I mean, let's put him in. Now you're at 8K per man. So the way you'd probably have to do this if you wanted to play him is you really would need to play, if not all of the underdogs, at least most of them from that list of key fights I gave you. So let's say you put in Nelson. Well, Burns is 7,500. That's pretty good. And then who was the other ones? So Nelson, Burns, uh, Ashmus. And what was that first fight? Um, let's say Ramaska. So you could do that. You know, you you could play Dolgarian with with one of those other favorites we talked about. And as long as you play all four of these underdogs, once you start doing other stuff like, you know, getting Fletcher in instead of Ramaska, I mean, you could do this too. You could almost get to. What can you do? You get the Santos? No, you can't quite get the Santos. So you could do it, actually. You know? <laughs> and maybe, just maybe, you should do it. You know, I, I think I don't think he's going to be as popular as, as he could be because the 9900 price tag is very, very scary. But, I mean, if you look at it, it it's they're pretty good lineups you can build with the $9,900 guy. I mean, everything has to go your way, but... Uh, I actually don't mind recommending this. I wouldn't think I'd recommend a 9900-hour fighter, but, I mean, he's minus 300 to win in the first round, and the first round comes in different safe shapes and sizes. It could be anything from, like, 110 to, like, 125. And if if you play him and you get that 120, and then you get these underdogs right, that's, you know, that you're, you're, you're in good shape, you know? So, yeah, not bad. Um, Okay, where were we over here? Um. Same proof fight is off. Zhurong Padilla. No. I mean, let's let's see. Zhurong inside the distance. I he's minus 110. I guess it's okay. What what's what's his story here? I mean, his price is gonna be what is this? 8900 All right. I mean, 8900 at minus 110. That's pretty good. Six takedowns? Ooh, yeah, sure. Why not? Six takedowns out of KO, 146 fantasy points. I mean, if he's got that kind of upside, I mean, let's 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 rock it. So we definitely like him as well. As a matter of fact, he's probably better than Santos now that I think about it, right? And why why would you know? Why wouldn't I take him over Santos? So I, I like this. I like this guy a lot. Um, and the other side, there's just no need. I mean, the, the other underdogs on the card just look better. Like plus 205 and his inside the distance line is what? Let's see. Plus 400. I mean, that's that's really not great. For his price, you'd want it to be probably plus 300 or better. Talked about Trevor Peak. All right, so Cody Durden took in, you know, came in the short notice to fight Max Schnell. And uh, Matt Schnell, and Matt Schnell, his price is, hasn't moved. I mean, it doesn't move. And this is probably what he should be against Durden anyway. Um, is 6,700. So no inherent value in him getting his replacement fighter. And Durden himself at 9,400, he, he's very similar to the Petrosky play. I mean, Durden is not really a guy that goes for, like, round and pound and a lot of finishes, but he does go for a decent amount of takedowns. I wonder if his um, his uh, taking the fight on short notice is going to impact, though, you know, his ability to, to get, like, multiple takedowns and all that control time. So I do worry about his upside a little bit. So at 9,400, I, I probably put him kind of down the list, you know, like behind guys like... Zhurong and, and Santos. You know, I just do. Uh, we talked about Nelson Garcia. All right, so this one, 
this uh, uh, Natalie Silva and Jessica Andrade. I think Andrade is a perfectly fine underdog here. Um, she's plus two sixty five. Whatever her inside the distance line isn't terrific. It's was it plus five hundred probably. It's like plus four fifty, which is not great. But if in fact she wins, I mean she's gonna win a striking battle with a bunch of volume. It, she's got to score ninety ish to actually get this win. So I'm not I'm not worried about that. So I I, I think that she's perfectly good underdog here. So I do like her. I I would I would just be I would just assume pass on um on De, on Natalie Silva here. And she's nine K and and we've talked about some really really good favorites and her inside the distance line is plus two hundred and she has no takedown upside. I mean this is I think this is almost like a full fade of De Silva. So. Um, I mean, that that's pretty much the, the end of it, right? I mean, you have the key fights I mentioned. As a matter of fact, I mean, now, now that I really think about it, I mean, it's possible that you could fade this main event. You know, the, the main event's always going to be sort of popular. And you could fade this. If you just get these three right, like the Garcia, the Peak, and say, you know, the Fletcher, you know, you could fade this with some of these other things that we talked about. Like if you get like an Andrade or something like that, if you get that thing home, or or heaven forbid, you could also get, uh, what's his name? What's the other uh, underdog I talked about? Uh, Felipe Dos Santos. I mean, you could do this, fade the main event, and you could, you know, you can play the $9,900 fighter, like for example, you know? So the key again is going to be those four, at least those three uh, high action fights. And I think you should really focus your approach to those. Uh, I think we went over the favorites that I liked and ones I did not and the underdogs I liked and the ones I did not. And uh, we're going to do a betting breakdown probably tomorrow, uh, taking a very contrarian look at things. Hopefully we get a little more consensus between now and then. And uh, then either later tomorrow night or Saturday, first thing Saturday morning, we're going to do the lineup construction video where we, you know, finalize our thoughts, actually build 150 lineups and show you guys techniques to hopefully take down that, you know, big $100,000 prize. All right. Uh, that'll do it. Good luck, everybody.